All right. Hi there. So in, in this particular video, we're looking at intervals of increasing, decreasing, as well as extrema for, front, for functions. And then we're going to wrap up the section by looking at graphing piecewise functions and then answering questions about those piecewise functions. Piecewise functions would be something that you um, would utilize a little bit uh, more in calculus uh, for those of you moving forward. Okay. All right, so, and, and also this increasing and decreasing stuff, you have a whole unit devoted to that in calculus as well. All right, so with that said, we'll get started here. So um, just give you some basic, hopefully, definitions up here at the top that just make sense. They're very intuitive. We say that a function is increasing if its graph rises from left to right. So hopefully that makes sense to you. It has to be rising to be increasing. A function is decreasing if it falls from left to right. When you're reading graphs, think about it like you're reading a book. Read it from left to right. A function is constant if it doesn't rise or fall from left to right. Okay. In, um, this note down here is very important. Intervals for, I'll, I'll highlight it here, intervals for increasing, decreasing, and constant are written in interval notation, and they always, always, always use parentheses, okay? Plus, you are always reading the x-axis. That is super important, okay? So make sure that you're always using parentheses and that you're always reading the x-axis. Two important key pieces. So, scooting on down here then to our first example, it says use these graphs below to find the intervals for increasing, decreasing, and constant. So a lot of times what I like to do is to kind of identify what these points are here in the graph. So this point up here is what we refer to, let me, let me undo that, I won't use, it's, let's keep it the same color. This point up here is a um, tippy top point, so it's a turning point in a sense. So the ordered pair for that point up there would be negative three, and it doesn't matter what its five value is, uh, maybe I'll say two, okay? Just, I'm just sort of guesstimating it. Really, remember, for increasing, decreasing, and constant, remember, I'm only reading the x-axis, so the y values don't really matter. This point down here, I would say, okay, well, that's a positive one for my x, this point right here. And then I'd say a y value, and let's just go with negative two. And then um, this point up here uh, would be one to four, and let's say three. Okay, so now if I am ready to identify my intervals for increasing, decreasing, and constant, I'm just going to um, read this from left to right. So as I pick up from, from over here, and remember you're reading your x-axis. So um, as, we come in from, as we come in from the left, right, your graph is increasing to this x value here of negative 3. So coming in from negative infinity to negative 3, I am increasing. Okay. Now, let's take the next leg of the graph and use a different color. So from that negative 3 to the positive 1, if we see this graph is decreasing. So from negative 3 to positive 1, I'm decreasing. Um, let's get our next color. So now from here, from 1 to our next turning point of 4, hopefully you agree, I was going up, so that's increasing. So from 1 to 4, I'm just worried about my x values, so from 1 to 4, I'm increasing. Like you've seen me do in the past, if you've got more than one interval notation, you just um, connect them with the union symbol. And then lastly, your graph is constant from that 4 and then everywhere to the right. So all of those x values are positive infinity. So from 4 to infinity, you are constant. Okay. So that's your intervals for increasing, decreasing, and constant. Now in the next graph, uh, you're basically doing the same thing. Don't let the open and closed circles trip you up. If, you know, because you're identifying increasing and decreasing, it is still going to be um, open and closed circles. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, it's still going to be parentheses. Um, all right. So with that said, um, I will talk you through that. If you and if you know, if you like, you can always pause the video and try it for yourself, and then come back to the video and see. Um, 
make, check yourself, okay? So um, picking up this first leg, and it might be helpful here. This is negative 7, and this one would be negative 3. This would be 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so now on this first leg of the graph, hopefully you would agree that this leg is decreasing. So its x values are coming from negative 7 to negative 3. So from negative 7 to negative 3, decreasing. Next leg of the graph, from negative 3 to positive 4, is straight across, so that would be constant. Negative 3 to positive 4, constant. And then that last leg of the graph, from 4 to x value of 7. Remember, we're not worried about that y-axis. From x value of 4 to x value of 7, this graph is increasing. So from 4 to 7, increasing. Okay. All right, we'll move on down then to a uh, definition for relative extrema. Hopefully, again, these are very straightforward and um, are, <clears throat> are intuitive as well. All right, so we have a, a rel the formula, I'm sorry, the definition for relative maximum is a point where your function changes from increasing to decreasing. So down here on the graph, you'll see here I have this identity. I didn't catch that. <laughs> I think somehow I activated Cortana. Hopefully she'll just go away. Sorry. <laughs> um, as you see here in the in the graph, that it has identified the relative maximum as this tippy top point. And and if you'll notice from on the graph itself, if you're reading it from left to right, over here it changes from increasing on the left hand side to decreasing on the right hand side, right? It goes from increasing to decreasing, so that makes it a relative max. This point down here at the bottom changes from on the left hand side from decreasing to the right hand side increasing, so that's why it's referred to as a relative minimum. I always think of them as a tippy top point for the maximum and a bottommost valley point for your minimum, all right? Let's flip it on over. At the top of the next page, it says it wants us to graph these functions and then find the indicated values. So um, let me pull up the calculator and um, let's graph this function. So it was y equals the absolute value. So clear that out. Y equals the absolute value. So remember, absolute value, you're going to go to math. Math is right underneath your green alpha key. Arrow over to num. And the very first one is abs. Hit enter on absolute value. Now type in, it was x plus 2, x plus 2. You need a right arrow key out of that absolute value bar so that then you can put minus 5. And then I'm going to hit zoom 6. I don't remember what's going on in this graph, okay, as far as like um, if I had done anything else in my calculator. But you could just hit graph, and then if, you're, if your calculator is showing you something wonky, then just hit zoom 6 at that point. All right, so this is our graph here. All right, I'm, I'm going to be going back and forth between the graph and the notes, okay? So I'm just going to draw a rough sketch here. So it looked something like that on our calculator. Absolute values are always your V-shaped curves. This is not perfect, okay? But, you know, roughly, that's what it was looking like. All right, so the first thing that it's asking for, it's, ask, it's asking for a lot of things. So it's asking for zeros, which you talked about in a previous section. It's asking for relatives and maxes and mins, which is we just picked up here in this section, as well as increasing and decreasing and constant, and domain and range we've talked about previously. So it's putting all the topics that we've talked about in this set of notes along with previous topics together. One of the things, first things that I'd have you find at this point is I think I'd come down here and let's find out what that um, point is down here. Let me ask you this. Would you think of that as a relative max or a relative min? Hopefully you would agree with, so it would be a relative min uh, because it's a bottommost point down here. So in our calculator, we can find that. We're going to go to second, trace. Trace is right beside graph. You want to find the minimum, so you're going to hit number three. Is asking us to, you know, it wants to find the minimum, so it's asking for left bound. Remember, this is the point here in the center that we're trying to find, so I need to move my cursor on the left-hand side of it, so I use my left arrow key to get that cursor over there. Just keep hitting it. And anytime, you know, once it's on the left-hand side, anywhere over there will do. You don't have to try to match up these numbers that I have down here. Hit Enter. And you'll notice it points that triangle to the right. Now it's asking for right bound, so use my right arrow key. 
Get on the right hand side of that bottom most point that you're trying to find. Anywhere over there will do. Hit enter. Those triangles should be pointing towards one another. It's sort of telling you, okay, your minimum is somewhere between those two vertical lines that it's just drawn. And then I like, now it's asking for the guess. I like to come down here and guess, as, you know, get my cursor as close to the point I'm trying to find as possible. Hit enter. Then it's telling you, you don't take your answer until you see the calculator say, okay, you have a minimum at negative 2, negative 5. Okay, so let me go back to our notes. So it's telling us that this point right here is the point negative 2, negative 5. So that's our relative min. In this particular problem, we don't have a... Um, a relative max because we don't have a point where we change from increasing to decreasing. So we don't have a relative max, we'll just put a line through that or NA if you don't have one. Okay. Now zeros, remember zeros are where you cross the x-axis, so we've got a couple of those, right? So we'll go back to our calculator. I told you in a previous section whenever we were calculating them by hand that I would show you how to find them in the calculator. So let's do that now um, in our calculator. Um, go back to second trace, number two for zero. You're going to have to repeat this twice, okay? So if we want to first try to figure out, okay, what's this value here? You know, and I agree, it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like it's negative seven, um, but sometimes it could, it, it may not be a perfect number, so I always recommend going through these steps. So um, it's asking you, when you do the zeros, it's asking you for left bound and right bound again. So if this is the point we're trying to find here, then I need to get my cursor on the left-hand side of it. So I just use my left arrow key here to get myself above, because that would be on the left-hand side of it. Hit Enter. Now it's asking you for right bound. Use your right arrow key. There you go. Hit Enter. Those, those um, triangles now are pointing towards one another, so it says that the zero is between those two lines. Now it's asking for the guess. Again, I always like to guess as close to the point I'm trying to find as possible. Hit enter, and it tells you, okay, you have a zero at negative seven. Go back to my notes. Okay, one of my zeros is at negative seven. So it's telling me this point over here is negative seven. Like I said, this is not to scale. And then it wants me to find, we know that there's another zero, so go back to the calculator. Come over here and find this zero. So back to your menu, second, trace, number two. Find that zero. This time, on the left-hand side of that point would have to be below the x-axis. So I've got myself below the x-axis. Right-hand side, because that's now for right bound, so right bound would have to be above the x-axis. So I use my right arrow key to get myself above the x-axis. And anywhere, like I said before, we'll do. Hit enter. Now I'm going to guess as close to that x-axis as I can get. And it's telling me I have another zero at positive three. So back to my notes, I have zeros at negative 7 and positive 3. So we're saying this right here is 3. Okay, like I said, again, not to scale. All right, so now let's identify our intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. As we read this graph from left to right, um, this first leg of the graph, as you're, as you're coming in, x values, I know the, the, I know the graph itself is increasing, but as you read it from left to right, um, from coming in from the left, the graph is decreasing up until you get to an x value of negative 2. So we would say that it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 2. At negative 2 then it changes now to going up forever so it's increasing and all the x values over here are positive so it's increasing from negative 2 to positive infinity. And then this graph does not have a constant p so I'm just going to put a line through that that does it's not applicable. Now it's asking me for but domain and range. So domain, I'm reading that x-axis again. So this, this um, graph goes up and to the left forever, up and to the right forever. So left and right, everything's being covered. I can say all real numbers, okay? Or negative infinity to positive infinity. It means the same thing. I believe in my lab math, they require you to write negative infinity to positive infinity, but... Um, all real numbers means the same thing. Range is really the only time you read your y-axis. Um, and so you look for the smallest y value in this graph is this negative 5. And then this graph goes up forever. So it starts at negative 5 and goes to infinity. 
Now, domain and range can have brackets, okay? So the negative 5 will get a bracket because you can equal negative 5, but the infinity, of course, gets a parenthesis. Your increasing, decreasing, and constant are always parentheses, but domain and range can have brackets, okay? All right, so um, let's get number 4 together as well, just because, you know, just to get you another example so that you're ready for whenever you start to look at these problems in, the, in your My Lab Math. So let me get back to my calculator, go to y equals, clear that one out, let's clear all this stuff down here, and so our function here, y equals x cubed, so x is right beside your green alpha key, I'm going to raise it to the third, I got to use my right arrow key to get out of that exponent, minus 2x squared, minus 5x, plus 6. So I'll just hit graph. All right, it's showing me a, a perfect graph here. So I can tell that um, in this particular graph, I've got a tippy top point. I've got a lowermost point. So I'm going to have a relative max and a relative min in this particular graph. So with that said, that's probably the best place to start because we need, we need to know what these x values are in order to um, divide up our increasing and decreasing intervals. So let's go back to our notes kind of crank out a, a relatively rough sketch of that graph that we just saw. So it kind of looked like something, something like that, essentially. Okay, so we would need to find this point up here, which would be a max, and this point down here, which would be a min. Again, if you, if you like, pause the video try it all and then if you get stuck on something I'm going to show all the calculator moves and that sort of thing okay so I'm going back to my calculator to find that maximum point I'm hitting second trace uh, the maximum is number four it's asking me for left bound so I need to get over here on the left hand side of that maximum point hit enter now it's asking me for right bound get on the right hand side of that tippy top point and then the guess I'm going to guess close to that tippy top point so this is not a perfect, these aren't perfect values, so you have negative 0.79, 8.21. I'm just, I'm just rounding here, okay? So if I go back to my um, notes, this was negative 0.79, comma, 8.21. That's the ordered pair for that particular point. So this max up here is negative 0.79, 8.21. Now to find this minimum point, Back to our calculator, um, second trace, minimum is number three, and left bound, so if this bottom most point is what I'm trying to find, so left bound will be here, hit enter, right bound, hit enter, and then I guess down here to the at the bottom, minimum I would say 2.12 negative 4.06 2.12 negative 4.06 so we're saying this minimum here 2.12 negative 4.06 again this, this graph is again not to scale all right our zeros let's go ahead and back and let's find those this time hopefully you agree you've got three of those here here and here okay so to find those zeros back in our calculator um, so I'm going to do I think I'll just find the first two for you and showing it to you so second trace zeros number two let's just um, I'm going to come all the way I'm going to I'm going to focus on this one over here on the left the far over left so just keep hitting that left arrow key now think about it, in relationship to this point right here, left bound would be below it, the x-axis. So I had to get my cursor down here below the x-axis, hit enter. Now right bound would have to be above the x-axis, one more time there. And then the guess, I'm going to get close to that x-axis as it'll let me. Okay, I have a zero at negative two. So one of my zeros is at negative two. Go back to the calculator, second trace, number two for zero. Focusing now on this one, and in relationship to this point, left bound is going to be above the x-axis. So use my right arrow key, get over here, there we go, hit enter, 
Now it's asking for right bound. Right bound would have to be below the x-axis. Hit enter. And then the guess close to that x-axis, positive 1. You would repeat that one more time for that last one, and you should find that it's going to cross the x-axis at 3. So we're saying that this is negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. Okay? All right, so now to come through and pick out our intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant. So the first leg of a graph is coming in, coming in from your negative x values. So the first leg of the graph is increasing up until I get to this tippy top point. So from negative infinity to negative 0.79, I am increasing. Next leg of the graph, so from that negative 0.79, all the way through to, to this point here, that minimum point, I am decreasing because I'm going down. So from negative 0.79 to 2.12, decreasing. And then the last leg of the graph increases forever. So from 2.12 to infinity, I am increasing. Again, I don't have any constant pieces in this graph, so I'll just mark through that domain, x-axis. This graph goes down and to the left forever, up and to the right forever. So domain here again, all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. And our range, smallest y value to largest y value. Since the graph goes down forever and up forever, it would also be all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay? All right, so let's flip it on over in our notes and let's look at piecewise functions. I'm going to do the first one and the last one with you. Okay? And in the, in the notes, I have provided for you um, the tables worked out. I'm going to use tables to solve these. I have the tables worked out for you in the solution key, and then there's a separate solution key that shows my handwritten graphs because I'm, these are difficult. You can't get a precise graph in your calculator when you're doing these, so you have to kind of do these by hand. All right, so this is what a piecewise function looks like. and It kind of looks like a set here. It says f of x, so remember it's saying y equals. It's saying that y equals 3 for all x values less than or equal to negative 2 and y equals 1 half x plus 6 for all x values greater than negative 2. So, you know, so, you know, the more familiar you are with graphing, maybe the less you have to rely on a table, okay? But if you're not as familiar with graphing, this table approach is, is, is hopefully gives you a structure, a framework, and is, is more, um, more seamless for you, okay? So, um, so, for example, I'm, I'm going to start here with the first one. You have you have the graph. We were looking at y equals three. Oh, y equals three. Y equals three. And this portion of the graph is for x values less than or equal to negative two. I'm just picking up the the first line of the piecewise function. And then the second line of the function says, okay, well, it's equal to y equals one half x plus six for all x values greater than negative two. I'm gonna make a little table x and y, x and y, and regardless of whether your um, restriction, I kind of call these restriction or constraint, regardless of whether your restriction or constraint um, it utilizes the endpoints, you're always going to plug the endpoint in, it's just that if it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you will you put a closed circle on your graph. If it's simply greater than or less than, so let me, I'm going to write this for you, less than or equal to and greater than or equal to get closed circles on your graph, less than and greater than get open circles on your graph, okay? So, all right, so ours is saying here that um, I'm going to, I need to choose x values less than or equal to negative 2. So if I choose, let's just choose negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Let's make it easy for ourselves, okay? Um, three points is always sufficient here for these graphs, okay? So it's telling you, regardless of what x value you choose, this function, y equals 3. And if you think about it, well, we really, we really didn't even have to do all of this because what does the graph of the line y equals 3 
is a straight horizontal line here, okay? I just need to chop off part of it. It says I'm only allowed to look at the portion less than or equal to negative 2. So the point negative 2, 3, because that's going to be, in, and it's less than or equal to, so that's going to be a closed circle. Negative 3, 3, negative 4, 3, and then we know it goes on forever, so we're just going to connect it, try to draw, try to draw a straight line. Um, there we go. That's the first leg of your graph. Now, if we come over here to our next one, it says we have to pick x values greater than negative 2. Even though it doesn't say it can equal negative 2, you need to use negative 2 and then just come over here and identify yourself, identify for yourself, oh, well, I couldn't equal it, so when I go to graph it on the calculator, or graph it on my paper here, it's got to be an open circle. When you graph it in um, my lab math, it's got to be an open circle. All right, so you're plugging this into a half x plus 6. So um, because this is 1 half, it's a, it's a fraction here, I want to choose numbers that I can easily take a half of. So I want to choose numbers greater than negative 2 that I'm going to easily be able to take half of. Well, 0 is an easy number to take half of. And, and it's greater than negative 2. Now I could choose 1, but half of 1 is 1. So, I'm sorry, not half of 1. Oh man, maybe I've been make, making too many videos today. Half of 1 is a half. So I, I, let me try to get some whole numbers here. If I put in a positive 2, okay, half of 2 is 1. All right, so that's, that's my thought process. I want numbers that I can easily take half of um, when I choose my table here. So half of negative 2, so let me get my pen a little bit smaller here so I can write it. So it's 1 half times negative 2 plus 6. So half of negative 2 is negative 1 plus 6, so that's 5. So the very first point on my graph is going to be negative 2, positive 5, open circle. Then the next one is half times 0 plus 6. Well, that's 0 plus 6. Okay, well, that equals 6. So the next point on my graph is 0, 6. And then the last one, half of 2 plus 6. Well, half of 2 is 1, and 1 plus 6 is 7. So then I'm plotting the point 2, 7, 2, 7. And if, if you think about it, once you have your starting point, this is this line right here is nothing more than um, slope and y-intercept. So once you have your starting point, look, your slope is one half. So it was up one over two, up one over two, and you know this was like I said, this was the line y equals three, but I could only look at x values less than or equal to negative two, which was your straight line there. Okay. So now let's come down and let's answer some questions. In terms of answering our questions, is you're going to base it off of the, the constraints. So when it asks you to find f of negative 8, you ask yourself, where does negative 8 fall in these two constraints up here? Is negative 8 less than or equal to negative 2, or is it greater than negative 2? And hopefully you agree, it's less than or equal to negative 2. So in, in, in all, and all, likewise, you can look at it up here in, in the graph itself. Oh, when, when your x is, remember this is your x, when x is negative 8, the function is positive 3. Next one, find f of negative 2. So this says, let your x be negative 2. Well, remember, only the top situation is where x equals negative 2. So x equals negative 2. Oh, that's also 3. Because so remember up here, it doesn't really equal the negative 2. f of positive 4, so when x is positive 4. That falls in the bottom constraint here. Okay, so you're plugging that in here, so you're asking yourself, okay, you're plugging that into this function right here, so you're saying, okay, what's well, half of 4 and add 6 to it, so half of 4 is 2, 2 plus 6 is 8. And if you look at your graph, you actually, or I actually plotted that point for 8 up there, okay? Now looking at our domain and range, domain from left to right, it comes in from negative infinity, and negative 2 has this filled in circle here to account for that gap up there and then it goes up and to the right forever so we would say our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity or all real numbers your range a little different here remember range you're reading your y values so you have this portion of the graph here that all the y values are 3 and then the, then you don't have another y value until you get to 5. So that would look like this, that you have 3, 
all by itself in a bracket, and then unite that. Now over here, your y values start at 5, and then they go up forever. So 5 to infinity. The 5, do you think that's going to get a parenthesis or a bracket? Hopefully you would agree with the parenthesis because that's an open circle. So, and then of course infinity always gets parenthesis. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do one more with you. I'm going to flip it on over and I'm actually going to do the last problem with you, number four. And that looks like this. It's just got three components this time. So it's telling you that for one of your functions, y equals 4. For one of your functions, y equals x plus 2. And for the last function, y equals x squared. And, you know, I, I can already tell I'm not going to have enough room to do all of that the way I want to, so let's, let's spread it out a little bit. And we'll come down here for y equals x squared. All right, so make it myself a little table. And this is, we're looking at y equals 4 in this one. For the top constraint, less than or equal to negative 2. So I have to use negative 2. It is less than or equal to, so I'm going to go ahead and tell myself, that's a closed circle. That's a closed circle. All right, I have to pick values now less than or equal to that, so I'm just going to go with negative 3 and negative 4. Um, on the next one. I, and so, and it's just telling me, I'm, I'll go ahead and finish this up, but just telling me, okay, for any of these x values, the y is always 4. So if I plot this, I have the point negative 2, 4 with a closed circle, negative 3, 4, negative 4, 4. And it just continues on. Ugh, can't draw a straight line. Okay. Now for the next one, make it my table. This one says that I'm looking at values between negative 2 and positive 1. So I need to, I have to put in both those endpoints, negative 2 and positive 1. The best point in between those I would say is 0. Okay. Now notice how both of these are just strictly less than signs. So hopefully you would agree then that those are going to be open circles on our graph. And we are plugging that into the point, um, into the um, equation x plus 2. So you have negative 2 plus 2. Okay, so that's going to give me 0. The next one's going to be 0 plus 2, so that'll give me 2. And the last one's going to be 1 plus 2, so that'll give me 3. So if I go to plot these points, I have the point negative 2, 0. So open, see negative 2, 0. Open circle here. 0, 2. And then 1, 3. Open circle. So just a little line segment there from here to here. And then the last leg of the graph is y equals x squared. And your constraint here is x greater than or equal to 1. So I have to use a 1. And then I would just go 2 and 3 because you're just trying to square it. So this is y equals x squared. And since it says greater than or equal to 1, then that means 1 gets a closed circle. So now if I take 1 squared, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared, 3 squared. So now if I plot these points, I have the point, get back up to my graph here, so 1, 1, and that's going to be a closed circle, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Now, I don't um, know how familiar you are with um, the y equals x squared function, but the y equals x squared is actually part of a parabola. So uh, um, this should be a little bit of a curve nature in there. So it's not, not my best work. Sometimes it's hard. But it, it's not a straight line. That's my point. There we go. That's, that's a little bit better. Okay, so you, you aren't going to be able to try to connect that with a perfectly straight line. It, sh it shouldn't be a straight line. The, the graph of y equals x squared looks like that. And then we're just focused in this particular graph is from, from there up. Okay. That's what we're looking at. We're ignoring this part because our constraint said we could only look at x values greater than or equal to 1. All right. So now let's identify the things that they wanted us to down here below. The first one asks us to find f of 4. So you have to figure out in which of these constraints does 4 fall. It's, it's not less than or equal to negative 2. 
it's not between negative 2 and positive 1, it's this last constraint, right? 4 is greater than or equal to 1. So I would be plugging it into this function. So 4 squared, 16. That's our first answer. All right, so for the next one, f of negative 7. You have to ask yourself, where does negative 7 fall within these constraints? And then hopefully you would agree it's the top one. So when x is negative 7, all of the, all, every time the y value is 4. Then the next one, f of negative 1. Where does negative 1 fall? So you would agree, right here in the middle. So I plug in negative 1 into this function. Negative 1 plus 2 would be a positive 1. Now let's focus on our domain. Read this graph from left to right. So it's coming in from negative infinity. You do have a hole down here, but this point up here fills in the negative 2 hole, the hole at negative 2. You've got, and then it keeps going. Now you've got a hole here, but the point down here fills in that hole, and then it goes up forever. So we can say our domain, negative infinity to positive infinity, or all real numbers. Your range, smallest y value on this graph, Hopefully you would agree with zero. And then follow this graph, and it's going up. And then here picks up your picks up that x that x value of three. This graph, this part of the graph right here fills in this hole, and then it just continues up forever. So it goes from zero to infinity. Infinity gets a parenthesis. The zero gets an, a parenthesis as well because it's an open circle down here. Okay. All right. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks a lot. Bye. Uh,